Welcome back to Suvida Everything, guys. You know, everybody has their guilty pleasure. A lot of people like McDonald's and other things. My guilty pleasure is Olive Garden. Yes, it is true. Going to Olive Garden always reminds me of my childhood. Ever since I can remember, I always liked Olive Garden. Is it the best Italian restaurant there is? No, it's not, but I like it. And to be honest with you, only for one dish. It's called Steak Gorgonzola. And after reviewing the menu and not finding it, I was shocked. Then the waiter was nice enough to explain to me that it was no longer on the menu. And that was a true disappointment and my mouth got everything on camera. Hey Google, why the sad face? You're recording me right now, Mama? Yeah. They don't have it anymore, guys. It's my guilty pleasure, you know? A lot of people like different things that you're not supposed to like. I like it. And there's no more, Mama. But since I was already there, I went ahead and ordered the chicken. How's the pasta, the burger? There's nothing wrong with pasta, bacon, shrimp, chicken, and also uh, red peppers. That's not what I came here for. I wanted my steak gorgonzola pasta, Omar. Am I disappointed? A little bit, because that's what I wanted. But I'm going to make it up for it. So I'm going to make it myself. So let's do it. And for today's meat, I'm going to be using this beautiful picanha. It is from Uruguay, and it's called Uruwagyu. And what they do is they blend their cattle with Wagyu cows. Even though it's not a 100% Wagyu breed, as you can see, the marbling is phenomenal. Just by looking at a piece of meat like this, you already know it's gonna be good. In Olive Garden, they used sirloin steak, which is not the best. And upgrading it to a picanha like this is the way to go. And if you are unfamiliar with this cut, you should get to know it. It is the best of the best. And the way I like to slice it is with the grain so that your final cut is against the grain. When you have a high grade piece of meat like this, you don't want to season it with anything crazy. So I kept the seasoning traditional with only salt and nothing else. And always remember to season both sides. Now that they are seasoned, all there's left to do is put them in the bag and get them ready for sous vide. One of the things that make this dish so awesome is the balsamic glaze. Remember, exact amount and ingredients always in the description down below. Start with your pan under medium-high heat and throw in one cup of balsamic vinegar. Then we want to reduce it to half. I do recommend using the good stuff. Once it has reduced to half, then you want to throw in your sugar. On a medium-low heat, stir it nicely and make sure all the ingredients combine together. You're looking for a nice, thick glaze. You see this consistency? It is not ready yet. It needs to be thicker. But after it has reduced to a little more, this is what you're looking for. It's so nice that it makes the spoon look like gold. Once you have reached that, your balsamic glaze is done. I like to put it on a squeeze bottle so that it can be used at any time. Now let's talk about pasta. There are two types of fettuccine. One has a nice smooth texture and the one I don't like to use it that much. Why? Because the sauce doesn't get stuck to it. Since it's so smooth, it will just slide out. But this one, however, you can see that the texture is completely different. As it has some texture, it will grab onto the sauce. So in my opinion, always look for this type. To cook it, all I did was to follow the directions on the packaging. Just make sure you do me one favor, don't overcook it. If not, it will be just mushy. Now to put the pasta together, I started off with a little bit of butter, followed by some minced garlic. Once my garlic has a nice golden brown color, I threw in some milk. As it was heating up, I added Parmigiano Reggiano, followed by Gorgonzola cheese. Then I combined all the ingredients together by mixing it under medium low heat. Then the next step is to temper my eggs and I do that by adding a little bit of the heated sauce. This will allow my eggs to make a nice mixture and not cook it. Then I threw the entire mix into the sauce. As it's cooking and reducing I added a little bit of sun-dried tomatoes followed by some spinach. Even though it looks like a lot of spinach you gotta remember it will reduce so add as much as you wish. Now the key here is up to your taste. If you like the sauce thick let it reduce. If you like it a little bit thinner you are ready to go. But now that our sauce is ready and also our pasta is cooking all there's left to do is to finish off our steaks. Talking about steaks I am cooking these beautiful Uruguayan Wagyu's at 135 degrees Fahrenheit for two hours. I got my beautiful Wagyu picanha ready. I cooked them at 135 degrees Fahrenheit for two hours. But enough talking let's take them out. Let's do it.
It smells fantastic, everybody. That picanha, it already comes through just as is right now. And like always, I have to pat it dry to get a wonderful sear. Talking about sear, I'm gonna go to the next level with searing it with the charcoal. And then we're gonna put it on that beautiful sauce and pasta that we just made. But I know it doesn't look that good right now, but watch this. All right, everybody, we have our beautiful steaks here. What do you think, Mama? They're, they're calling for me. <laughs> they're calling my name. Yesterday, I almost cried on the restaurant because I really wanted this. This is my guilty pleasure, everybody. I absolutely love it. I don't know why they took it off from the menu. Save money. Save money? Why do you think that is? They had us for so many years, and now they just took it off. But uh, I'm excited to find out if I got the taste. Have you ever had this one, Mama? Nope. First time? First time. Oh, you're in for a treat. All right, let me serve you. Let's do this. All right, we got you plated, Mama. As you guys saw it there, everybody, we already had some bites on the picanha that we sliced it thin. Mama, we couldn't hold it, right? <laughs> And the picanha was incredible. We already know it's gonna be good. So let's uh, let's go for it, Mama. A bite of everything, yeah. Oh, this picanha. I just let's just try the picanha for them, Mama. They want us to try the picanha <laughs> first, yeah. Well, if they want, we have to give them. I what know. They want. Give it to them what they want. All right, we're gonna try the picanha first by itself, everybody. Cheers. <laughs> so soft, tender, juicy. This picanha is incredible, everybody. Come on. Ridiculous. <laughs> the flavor is very different from the regular picanha that we have it. Yep. Is it a wagyu picanha? It is a wagyu picanha. Ah, that's okay. There you go. <laughs> it has a little bit more fat than, you know, the regular cheap picanha that we usually get. The biggest difference of this picanha and a regular picanha to me is that it's a little bit creamier. The fat is like different than a regular fat. The fat is inside of the meat. So right. It's extremely fat. It gives you a little bit. Of, it changes the flavor. It changes the texture. texture changes the softness. And picanha is already very flavorful and very soft. So this, it's like takes it to a different level. Different level. There. All right, Mama. Cheers. Cheers. Welcome to Steak Gorgonzola Deliciousness, Mama. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Hmm. <laughs> wow. That is phenomenal. Wow. Just like I remember on the restaurant. Wow. <laughs> uh, no, this cannot be what they have on the restaurant. No restaurant is this good. <laughs> I'm so sad that they don't make it anymore, but I feel a lot better now that I can make it at home. <laughs> the pasta is wonderful. The creaminess of the sauce is great. The tomato adds some like sweetness mm -hmm. with a little bit of tartness. And that balsamic glaze, it's balsamic vinegar with sugar. So it adds like a little bit of acid mm. with that. You balsamic know. with sugar. Yeah. <laughs> How can you go wrong, How right? How can you go wrong with that? <laughs> and then to top it all off, you grab the wagyu picanha and put it in there, Omar. Come on. Oh. <laughs> anyway, guys, this is the results of their gorgonzola steak. I hope you guys enjoy it. If you ever been to Olive Garden and if you order this dish, let me know what you guys think. I love to know. For me, I'm happy that I no longer have to go there, but at the same time, I wish Olive Garden did not take that out. Maybe they'll put it back. Olive Garden, if you are watching this, please put it back on the menu because I love to go there for this dish specifically. But we had other things guys, that were good. Guys, don't worry about Olive Garden. Just do this in your side. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> this is better than any restaurant. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, it, it is a wagyu picanha after all. Exactly. I know, right? <laughs> Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do enjoy this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to subscribe for future videos. Remember, if you are interested in anything I use, everything is always in the description down below. 
Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. There's more picanha there, right? There's more. Oh, okay. You guys thought that we left the other picanhas and we only got the little bitties, right? We still have the big steak. Go get those big steaks, mama. Mm. Mm. Don't have to tell me twice. Let me tell you guys, when you combine them both together, the steak and the pasta, it's like creaminess of the sauce. Yep. The saltiness and the flavor, the beefy flavor of the steak. <laughs> ah, hey, okay, I'm mama. drooling just thinking about it. I'm trying to find words, but I can't do it because I have to focus on not drooling on the plate. It is incredible, everybody. I hope you give it a try. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it that thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.